What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, I'm going to teach you how to salvage a contaminated Petri dish. So, mistakes can happen in the lab. This one it is a lion's mane culture, so you can see the lion's mane mycelium is growing. However, there is a little spore of what looks like some penicillium that got into this Petri dish and is growing. So your instinct as a new mycologist might be to try to cut out that blemish and preserve this dish. However, as soon as you open this up, those spores are gonna start to move around. And if you try to cut that out, the chances of that penicillium releasing its spores and ruining this whole Petri dish and potentially ruining your lab is very high. So the correct procedure is to find the leading edge that is farthest away from that colony. So on this dish in particular, I might try to take some mycelium from this edge and transfer it onto a new Petri dish. So because I'm working in my lab, I'm not gonna turn on my flow hood for this video. Um, that's just gonna help blow around those spores, which I'm trying to keep out of my lab. Uh, another method that I would use is to use a still air box. So if you've seen my video on how I would grow mushrooms without a flow hood, um, check that video out. You'll see the still air box that I'll use, but for this video, I'm just gonna risk it inside my lab and I'll just open up that dish very carefully, take a wedge from the leading edge of that mycelium and transfer it onto a new Petri dish. So because this is just one single spore that's isolated on this dish, my thoughts are it probably came from the air or from my, my shirt or my arm or something like that. Another example of a contaminated dish that probably happened from me is on this plate here, you can see right around the edge, there's some trichoderma or potentially some more penicillium. And that probably happened when I was working with a dish and some, some contaminants fell near the edge. So this king oyster is also very salvageable. I'm just gonna cut a wedge from the edge over farthest away from the contamination. And that way I'll be able to preserve my Petri dish. But now that I felt this dish, I'm actually noticing that there's a little crack. So that's probably where that contaminant come from. So that's another you know, reason to observe your dishes while you're pouring. I ended up using this one without even realizing it was cracked. So that was a first, but uh, interesting enough, I can still salvage some of that mycelium on the far side. Here's another example of this uh, Clitocide that I've been working on for a few months. It looks like there's this blob of bacterial growth surrounding the mycelium, but there is a clean portion of that mycelium right on the edge there. So I can take from that clean mycelium and transfer it onto a new uh, Petri dish to save that culture uh, it's always a good idea to have backup plates and backup slants, but this is worst case scenario if you only have one Petri dish left and you're trying to grow that mushroom or it's your favorite strain, don't be afraid. You can still save it. There's a lot of methods that you can do, but this is the easiest way, in my opinion, to save a contaminated Petri dish. So I'll flip this around and go through my procedure on how to save this. Okay guys, I'm not super worried about this because I have so many backups, but just to show you guys the method that I use, I'll run through this very quickly. So the first thing I'll do is just spray down everything with isopropyl and get my sterile blade ready. So I like using the number 11 blades because they have that nice sharp bevel. And once again, I said that I'm not gonna turn on my flow hood for this 
this procedure just because I don't want these spores blowing everywhere. And if you notice some condensation on your plates, you can just tap that onto a paper towel and it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so I've got my Petri dish here and I'm gonna be careful to keep this colony far away from my workstation. And I'm just taking my parafilm off the dish so I can open it and very carefully without really disturbing that other culture, I'm going to take a cut from this mycelium in this clean section here. So it doesn't have to be huge. Just like that. And then I'll put it on that clean Petri dish, whoops. It looks like I whacked the edge there, so I'm actually not gonna use that piece and I'll carefully just put that off to the side. So that's another tip is if you have any doubts, start over. I'm just gonna re-sterilize this blade with my induction sterilizer. So you can see it heated that up. And I'm gonna go back in for another one. So don't rush your culture work. Let's try this again. That will be my lion's mane. Now I'm gonna sterilize this again because I don't wanna transfer any lion's mane mycelium onto that next plate. And once again, I got some condensation, so I'll just go ahead and tap that out. And this is my king oyster. cracked petri dish, which I shouldn't have used. And I just touched the outside of that dish one more time. So you can see I'm a little rusty from taking some weeks off for a new baby. Now some people might be against that cauterization, but king oyster mycelium is very strong. So it should be handle, able to handle a little bit of burning. Now this one is very tricky because that bacteria is kind of surrounding everything. But if you see on the side here, at the edge of that bacterial colony, I might be able to scrape away some nice Clitosibe species. So before I start, I'm gonna tap, tap out that condensation one more time. Give it a nice 30 seconds. And the Geeky Sterilizer. If you haven't seen the video on this, I'll put the link in the description. It's definitely clutch for doing projects like this where I can just rock one blade and then let's see if we can get this little corner here. This is gonna be the trickiest one. So I'll cool this off in the corner and because it's bacteria I can really take that lid off I love that 
Clitosby mycelium almost has like a purple tinge to it. But that's it right there. So it's got some mycelium right on the tip there. And that's all you need is just one cell. And then I'll go ahead and label these and parafilm them up. Okay, so I like to delegate these as different transfers so that I know that this one might still have a potential contaminant. So I'm gonna be extra observant as this one grows out just to be on the safe side. So I'll do the same thing with my lion's mane. So I'm just writing penicillium because there might be a chance that I carried some over and I don't want to bring this into my lab if the flow hood's blowing. discard these old plates. Some people will autoclave them and then throw them out, but I'll just usually wrap them in some, um, some saran wrap or something and get rid of them. And now I have backup cultures that can go into the incubator. All right, so I wrapped these up with parafilm and now I'm going to put them in the incubator for seven to 10 days keep an eye on them before I open them up in my lab with my flow hood so that I can continue working with these prized mycelium cultures. I hope you guys enjoyed that video on how to save contaminated Petri dish cultures. There's a few more complicated techniques that you can use, such as using different medias like antibiotic media, but I like to steer away from that and use my skills with aseptic technique and you know, using my lab properly in order to save these cultures on a Petri dish plate, which is like 10 cents. So it really makes it worthwhile to have the skill set to be able to continue your cultures perpetually for the most part. If you're interested in getting some of our liquid cultures and possibly some plate cultures this spring, I'm gonna have all new varieties on our Etsy so check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. I've also got these hats on our Etsy and um, some of our shirts and different swag on there. Uh, we have about 16 different varieties that we're gonna be growing next season. So I use all of the same mycelium that I use in my own production, as well as some new species that I gathered over the summer. So I'm going to be launching a whole new gambit of outdoor cultures and different medicinal cultures. And go ahead and check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. Subscribe to our channel if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Give us a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, comment below if you have any more questions. And until next time, much love. All right, everyone, it's been five days since I transferred and I've got a really nice looking king oyster. So this is the ideal plate that I like to work with. It's got growth almost up to the edge, very clean, healthy mycelium. So that was the king oyster transfer. And now if you take a look at that lion's mane, you can see there's still a culture near the edge. So even though I tried my hardest, I still transferred a little bit of that penicillium mold and there's a couple options. So I can either take from the edge again and move on to a new Petri dish, which is why it's a good idea to have some Petri dishes on hand. Or what I'm probably going to do is just go back to my original slant culture and then transfer that onto the Petri dishes. And that way I don't have to open up a contaminated dish. I, I can go back to the original strain and then 
perpetuate that whole cycle over again. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Give us a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more mycology videos like these. And until next time, much love.